Hi everyone, it's Helen here. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tutorial. So today we're going to be making the Dinky Doctor's bag. I love this one. This is the, the third size. Yeah, number three. This is the third size that we have in this style and I absolutely adore Door, how cute these are so this one here was made with the embossing folder the quilted one and today we're going to be making the craft version of this one but with the mock croc and these are available in a5 so let's jump straight in so here is the die set this is the dinky doctor's bag die set and it's literally just a miniature of the other ones and we have added some mats to this one so we have some cross uh, stitch detail on those mats as well and we have this little one here as well i won't pick that up i'll actually just show you on there what we have right so we're going to be using some ink as well with our embossing folder i'm just getting everything ready here we go, I'm going to be using walnut stain with that, we'll get to that in a moment, and a quick cutting guide and then how to assemble, which is the assembly is exactly the same as the other two larger ones. So two of the main panels and two of the side panels, so the gussets there, and then I've got all of my little accessories. Um, I've got two of these but I am going to have to cut out another two of those, so you're going to need four of those, and I have here one handle and I also have a zip thing so I need to cut that from silver and two of the straps and then at the end I'll just die cut all of the little accessories that I'm going to be needing. So before we run this through with our embossing fold and ink what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my bone folder and I'm going to fold all the score lines just so that they definitely don't get lost um, in all the folds and textures of the embossing folder. If it's heavily textured, there is a risk you could lose some of your score lines. So if you press those down, it really should make it nice and easy for you to find those again. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be leaving these shorter sections here. So you have a... Sh uh, a smaller section here and a larger section at the top. We're only going to concentrate on folding this top larger section down as these this bottom score line is going to be our guideline so that does not need to be folded. And these sections here create the tuck-in point for the closure of the bag so if I take this off here you'll see they fold inwards and there's actually a load of space in there okay so I have I have everything folded now and I am actually going to move to um, an A4 die cutting machine so follow your manufacturer's instructions for your um, your cutting and your, your sandwich basically for your embossing folder so I'm going to get that ready and let's prep this so this is the mock crock and I have actually used this I gave it I think I need to just soak this in some water just to get all of the ink out of the nooks and crannies but I am actually going to ink up this side I will get some transfer of the ink possibly on the bottom side but that's not going to bother me at all and I don't have to be careful with my positioning of this either whereas with this one you will because it's very geometric and if you want it straight then just make it as straight as possible but because this is kind of like a higgledy piggledy sort of pattern I'm not going to bother I'm just going to pop it on there all right so grab your ink and cover that completely you can use any ink you want I'm just going for the walnut stain because it's a very good brown if you have vintage photo that would also work nicely so fold that down and then add that to your sandwich and then run that through and then repeat what I've just done with all of the other pieces okay there we go isn't that stunning 
so the ink has gone right into the shadows or the bits that have been debossed pressed down so that is really going to bring out just the um the overall pattern on there very different from just having it plain okay so we've already pre-folded all of our score lines so they should be really easy to find now and nothing's got lost in the pattern I'm already looking forward to seeing how this bag is going to look once it's popped together okay so we have a very faint score line here you can just about see it so we're going to be using that as our guide to overlap everything uh, so this end over that end so it's literally using up the space there so it's taking up the same amount of space on the overlap it doesn't go over the score line it literally stays within that space so glue those together I am actually going to use some um, Oh no, I don't. I have, I have run out of the skinny tape. I have these left. Let me go on a search. I found some really skinny stuff here. So I will actually be using some red tape with the construction of this bag. It's just easier to have something that can hold things in place whilst the glue dries. If I can even get into this thing. Oh, that was a tough cookie. Right, so let's get this on. And then I am also going to add a little bit of glue on top of that. If you've been following me a while, you know I like to use both. Use your bone folder, press that right into the fibres. This is especially important now because we have all of these raised areas. So press that right in. That should really help getting the uh, backing off as well add some glue I'm going to be using some book binding glue here this does dry very very fast and it's a very very good rival for the cosmic shimmer uh, glue as well right so let's pop this together and then press that down Then we have these two to add as well. I am going to actually use my ruler to help me line everything up here. You can actually measure the exact point if you want to, but I am just going to eyeball it. I'm going to use my glue as well so it gives me a bit of wiggle room. I'm not going to add any red tape to this section. I will just have to be extra patient for it to dry okay so let's pop that on so this middle line here needs to so sort of be in the center but the actual middle point of this whole panel is about an eighth of an inch in from this final line here because they're overlapping the middle point is somewhere else and then just to make sure that I have this lined up the other side I'm just going to use my ruler to get it in the right place okay I'm gonna press that down and then I'm going to leave that to dry completely I will actually just turn this over just to make sure that I do have the score line in at the right place so do a little test there we go I'm happy with that so I'm just gonna leave that aside now just to dry okay so that's pretty much dry now I'm happy to kind of move it about with without things falling off and I'm just going to use a thicker red tape now I'm going to be popping this onto our side tabs here but again when we pop this together I'll be adding some glue as well okay press 
those down. Okay, and then what else, um, what else I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of glue just here for our first one. So do that every time you work on the next section. Okay, so I'm going to take off the backing of this one here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this across. So poke these inwards, because that's where they're supposed to go. I'm just going to roll this across and then using the table as my guide down here I'm just going to line everything up just like that but keeping it down flat on the table I can then press that down and then I'm just going to just gently push those into place okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that on the opposite side here Okay, and now I'm going to ask you to do the hardest thing ever, which is wait for this to fully dry properly before we start folding in these edges here. So yeah, please wait, set that aside, don't touch it, don't be tempted. But in the meantime, we can work on our straps and our fittings, buckles and all that jazz. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly ink all of these bits up here. I've die cut another two of those straps we have the two strap buckles here i have my bits already die cut out there and the zip feature as well for this one so let's get inking up i'm going to stick with the walnut stain then by then we should be ready to start assembling okay holding your thumb there with your rest of your hand just here if you just push down like that that will give you the shape and you can push upwards here with your fingertips here just to get that shape so you kind of don't get that collapsed look once you pinch these top bits together okay so let's add the straps now because this is sort of curved at the bottom it's going to be a lot easier if you prime these first with some red tape but do add some extra glue on top of that tape as well just to make sure that uh, it's going to stay there for the long term as you can see the tape is holding that in the right curved shape and the glue will just make sure that in time it doesn't peel off and become undone so do the same now for all the others so we have one going here and then another two which we will hold together like this and line up and add like that so it's exactly lined up perfectly okay so we've got our little straps on now and having that all inked up really does help bring some dimension and some interest so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add these on now with a little bit of glue and we're going to pop these on at the back bit so I'm leaving this sort of space and gap here so we have probably just over an inch of strap on the bag and the rest is coming off that's what's going to reach around the front here to attach it to the front and again this is going to need a little bit of time to stick and dry as you can see they want to wiggle and move until that glue has dried but you really need the glue here to hold things in place long term just make sure that that is even I can see here that looks about right there we go leave that now to dry 
So let's work on the zip. We have this little square here. Let's go through with what I've die cut. I've got this little square here. It's not a square, it's a rectangle. <laughs> there we go, let's pop that on there. And then I have the zip pit uh, part die cut as well, so we'll glue that together. I've chosen my little label. I've got a little rectangle one here. You also get the choice of the oval. And then we have, um, what do we have? The zip pull thingy, here we go. And the buckles that I've just done as well. So that all comes in one piece. There is one little section I forgot to put on. Let's quickly do that now. We. I'm just going to try and put these underneath those little straps that I've put on. So hopefully I will have a bit of wiggle room. I do. That's good. Quickly pop that on there. I'm not going straight to the end of the bag because we have this bit folded in here. So it just needs to be on that folded edge. Okay, that's the important side to get down before we get these straps on. There we go. Now you can actually repeat the same on the other side. So here is my little zip here. I've added the little zip pull on there as well choose your angle. Got a bit of glue everywhere but that'll be fine. There we go, we can stick that onto the back but I'm going to leave that to dry over there. So let's move now over to the velcro fastening. You've seen me do this many many times. I like to use these really super slim ones. I still haven't managed to find these in black. I found the thicker ones in black but just not the super slim ones and I've had a really good search so I don't know if they even exist but um, I do like to trim these up so I will make sure that these are linked down below. I'm just going to add these to the straps here. Press those down and then take the backing off. Okay, squeeze this together and make sure that your bag is perfectly lined up. <clears throat> and then bring those forward and press those down. Okay, so we're not going to leave it just like that because we haven't really pressed down this Velcro into the front of the bag. They're stuck really well onto the straps, but just not onto the actual bag. So grab yourself a little pokey tool or paper piercer and just carefully separate the Velcro hook and loops just like that. There we go, do the same on the other one. You can see it's trying to escape and come off. Just carefully separate, trying to keep everything in the right place. Then what you can do is you can press these down now. I've got my hand in there, give them a really good pressing. That's gonna push that right into the actual bag now. But these do have a little bit of drying time. I think it's like 24 hours for a really good stick. So pressing it down really does help. If you don't do that step, then you're going to have um, Velcro that comes off really easily from your bag and it won't kind of keep stuck for you. Okay, so let's now add the finishing touches. So let's pop this on. This actually might look really good propped up on some um, 3D foam pads or something like that. That would look really good. So I'm just going to add this on here on the back there and then I am actually going to use a bit of a 
foam pad here. I've snipped. I've been snipping them up. Oh look, I do have a larger piece here. Let's use that. Oh, I dropped that on the floor earlier. I don't like dropping things on the floor because it comes back with extra bits that I don't want on it. But yes, maybe I should hoover more often. Pop that on. And let's do the handle. Bone folder again. Just curl that up. This does have some score lines in it too, so you can fold those up either side. And if you don't fancy this handle, we have the accessories, the dinky decorative fittings die set. You have a whole choice here of loads of accessories and different handles and luggage tags that you can add to it instead. So you're not just stuck with this handle. Okay, now that is the Dinky Doctor's bag. I absolutely love this one and I do have some more ideas on what I can do with this bag. So do make sure that you're subscribed. You can click on the link down below. I'll leave um, more links down below as well for all of the things that I have used today so that you can easily find them. If you have any questions, please let, them, let me know in the comments. Now, I absolutely love this one. It's so cute. Which one's your favorite? Let me know. I'd love to know. And what kind of um, paper would you use, or patterned paper would you use to make your little bag? So if you like this one, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.